Our Baltimore Ravens got a huge opportunity sitting right in front of them to make this good team even better. We about to talk about exactly how. Before we do, let's talk about this draft class. We, of course, covered the first four picks in the draft, but let's talk about the rest of them. Cornerback TJ Tampa. He was a cornerback that was rated a lot higher, but the Baltimore Ravens got him a lot lower. And Brees Hall, not even on the Ravens, he said something that a lot of people have been saying about TJ Tampa, saying that they feel that he could be the steal for the Baltimore Ravens in this draft. But Brees Hall, he said something even better. Again, not on the Ravens. He's not a Ravens player. He obviously ain't a GM. This is a player that plays for a completely different team. But Brees Hall said he feels that TJ Tampa, cornerback that the Baltimore Ravens selected. Again, Brees Hall ain't on the Ravens. He ain't got no affiliation with the Ravens, at least for now. But Brees Hall said that he feels like TJ Tampa could be the steal of the entire draft. That's some strong words coming from somebody who, again, not affiliated with Ravens in any shape, form, or fashion. So we're going to see about that. They also selected uh, running back Rasheen Ali, uh, somebody with some really good speed and somebody that was crazy productive. This man scored like a million, a million touchdowns, man. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's what I like. I, I love when... Teams pick players that produce. Obviously, so much of it is based on potential. And potential is great. Potential is amazing. But if somebody has been delivering, they've been delivering the goods over and over and over and over and over. Oh, yeah. I'm with that all day, every day. So we'll see what type of impact he could have um, because Ravens right now, their running back room it was a little thin because before it was just Derrick Henry uh, and Justice Hill. Keaton Mitchell, we'll see when he comes back. Hopefully soon, but realistically, probably won't be for a while. But we'll see. We won't know till we know. But you throw in Rasheen Ali in there, so he can come in there, relieve Derrick Henry sometimes, relieve Justice Hill sometimes, and then you still got some other people that could be options as well. Now, this pick right here, the next pick was Devin Leary. And I know uh, Ravens fans were like, oh, EDC, you cooking, buddy. You cooking. You doing your thing. And then when he picked Devin Leary, fans were like, whoa, what are we doing? But I get it. Look, at, at that point of the draft, it's just like, all right, hey, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. They just brought in somebody else uh, as I, I can't really say QB competition and maybe not even backup QB competition. Um, but I, I probably for a spot on a practice squad. It's a big possibility that he might not even make the roster. Actually, these the, the last three guys, it's possible, possible for them not to even make the roster, but uh, we'll see how things shake out. But when you're picking somebody so late, uh, it's not much of an investment. Obviously, things could work out because we've seen fifth, sixth, seventh round draft picks work out before, but the chances of it working out are a lot slimmer they are a lot less likely because those guys are not going to get the opportunities like a first or second or third round pick uh will get but we won't know till we know so when when they picked him i was like oh okay uh, but i ain't tripping because there's not significant investment like it ain't like he coming in to take the job from lamar jackson even josh johnson but he he produced a, a, at his school but at the same time um, he, he would just be coming in for a possible backup opportunity. So I ain't tripping over it. I know a lot of Ravens fans are like, hey, that should have been Brendan Rice. That should have been him. But anyway, um, then the last two picks, uh, center, Nick Samak. Uh, so, again, developmental offensive lineman. I know he dealt with a little, little bit of injury history in school or whatever. But, again, it, it ain't like he coming in to take over for Tyler Linderbaum. But we did lose uh, Sam Mustafa. Who last year, hey, when that boy came in, when Tyler Linderbaum missed them games, Sam Mustafa came in and he was amazing, man. He did his thing. So we needed somebody to be the backup center. So, hey, there you go, backup center. And then last but certainly not least, uh, safety, uh, Sanusi Kane. That's a powerful name right there. Shout out to him. Um, but Ravens need more rotational safety guys. Uh, they, they also um, they signed an undrafted rookie free agent uh, from Maryland. From Maryland. Oh, I want to see, Is it Bo? I don't remember his name off the top of my head. I know y'all will, though. But anyway, uh, the Baltimore Ravens as safety, they are a little thin. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, so there's that. But anyway, that's Baltimore Ravens draft class. So those are the guys who are already on the roster right here, right now. But where Baltimore Ravens could get even better is because now, uh, well, very, very soon, 
a lot of free agents out there who are still out there. And some names I'm extremely surprised by. Very, very soon, they will not count against the comp pick formula. Even though I feel like with the Baltimore Ravens, like <laughs> they ain't worried about the comp pick formula because they signed a few people here and there, outside free agents who would count against the comp pick formula, but they lost like 50 people uh, this offseason. So, and, and plenty of them are going to qualify the Baltimore Ravens for comp picks. I believe the max of comp picks that you can get in a season is four. And I'm pretty sure the Baltimore Ravens are going to reach uh, that status next year. Uh, so we'll see. But there's a lot of free agents that are available right now that could help the Baltimore Ravens out. And let's name a few. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out a ton. Now, um, some of the names available right now. Offensive lineman, one of the biggest ones and probably the best ones. And I'm sh shocked that he ain't been surprised yet. Uh, Dalton Reisner. And he's somebody that can play on the interior of the offensive line. So if, just if, the Baltimore Ravens, a couple of different reasons. If they still have question marks about their offensive line, because you got a Ben Cleveland. It's like, all right, cool. You got a possible Andrew Voorhees, and you're going to hope he stays healthy. But if you want to bring in somebody else, even if it's just for competition's sake, he's there and available. So you got an opportunity. Uh, there's Connor Williams as well. At wide receiver, there's Tyler Boyd, in my opinion, He's not a bad receiver, but mm, maybe I, I, I just don't feel like that would really move the needle like that. Um, there's a reunion with OBJ. We'll talk about that later. Uh, there's Michael Thomas, who's out there, too. Um, and Michael Thomas, again, the, the injury concerns are still there. Well, OBJ, the injury concerns are still there. Uh, the hands are there for both. Um, both could come in and certainly help, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. But, the, I mean, the more the merrier, the more quality the merrier, but we'll see. Uh, at defensive line, <laughs> it's an old face, like literally old face, Calais Campbell. Uh, so, um, and at edge, there's Emmanuel Ogba, Yannick Ngakwe. I mean, they tried Yannick Ngakwe before, but that was on a completely different defense, completely different defense. So maybe, just maybe, like you saw what Jadavian Clowney came in and did. You saw what um, Kyle Vanoy came in and did. Like, and I know we ain't got Mike McDonald no more, but we've got somebody who was right here in the building with him. Uh, that being, um, oh, my goodness, Zach Orr. Zach Orr. So I'm sure he will implement a lot of what Mike McDonald did successfully and then put his own spin on stuff. But what I'm saying is that before under Wink, and shout out to Wink, by the way, but before under Wink, our pass rush was, ugh, it was a big yikes, a big yikes. But with Mike McDonald, we had a pass rush again. We had multiple guys contributing as pass rushers. We had pass rushers that were able to find a rhythm. And that's something that they complained about in Wink's system. So maybe, just maybe, when we look at pass rushers and possible pass rushers, possible edge guys that could come in and help, we look at them completely differently now because the defense is completely different. Now getting into some of, some of my favorite free agents that are available right now that could come in and possibly help the Baltimore Ravens. We just talked about the, the, the safety that they drafted. Uh, we also talked about the undrafted rookie free agent um, that they signed from Maryland. Again, I forget his name. My apologies. Team keep it clean. But you think Ravens right now where they're at at this point uh, of this team, how close they are to getting over that hump? You think they're going to start a rookie? Because, you know, they're going to want to have three safeties on the field. Just like, again, don't fix something that's not broken. Just so Kyle Hamilton can continue to have that freedom that he already had. And sitting out there right now, surprisingly still available, is my guy, Justin Simmons. And that's somebody who I dreamt of the Baltimore Ravens signing him. I, I just, I remember when he first got released, I'm like, what, Broncos released Justin Sim Oh, yeah, they rebuild for sure. Got rid of Russ, got rid of Jerry Judy, got rid of uh, Justin Simmons, and more, too. But um, he's still there, which is crazy to me, still there. I would love if the Baltimore Ravens signed him. I would love it because you could have Marcus Williams. Hopefully, he'll be healthy. You have Justin Simmons, and then you still have Super Duper Cop. Oh, my goodness. Then you got Marlon Humphrey. You got Brandon Stevens. You got Nate Wiggins. You got Arthur Millette. Okay, let's go. So secondary would be even better. Because secondary right now is in a good place. But, again, this is a huge opportunity for Eric DeCosta and the Baltimore Ravens to put them in an even huger place, an even better place. 
Eric DeCosta, talk to me, my friend. And if Justin Simmons, if that's not your cup of tea or a cup of coffee, whatever you drink, or just straight up cup of water, they steal Michael Hyde. And that's not a bad option either. And we played the Bills this year, too. So we could get back at them. Michael Hyde, catch a couple picks on Josh Allen because he knows Josh Allen. When he gets practice to Josh Allen. So, yeah, hey, that's not a bad. I, I would not be mad at either one. My preference, again, Justin Simmons, but because of the, how just productive he's been over the years. But either way, I wouldn't be mad at either one. And I, I just I, I feel like the Ravens just can't be done at the safety position yet. So that's the name. Then you got um at cornerback, they listed Stephon Gilmore. I didn't even know he was still out there in the Dory Jackson. But somebody else. And the Ravens, like, again, secondary is in a good place. But there's still Xavier Howard out there. Now I know some people might be, oh, well, Rashad Bateman showed that he was washed. That he was done. No, oh, Xavier Howard, he's still all right. Um, but again, it's all about depth. It's all about depth for me. And right now with the Baltimore Ravens, like the more depth you have, the better your worst person is. So he wouldn't come in and start, obviously. Because, um, again, you got Marlon Humphrey, you got Brandon Steven. You got your two outside corners already. But just a, a, one of them stay ready so you ain't got to get ready type of thing. But Xavier Howell, it wouldn't be a big deal if they did or did not uh, get him. Because, again, Ravens secondary, they ain't a nice place right now. But, again, any position group is in a nice place until injuries occur. Hopefully injuries don't happen. Um, but Ravens secondary, as we know, like we always say, they always get tested. So stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And, and that's, just, that's just all the, the free agent class that's out there. That's just that. Then, of course, Ravens brought in a lot of other guys, undrafted rookie free agents, uh, some on the offensive line, some more at receiver who a lot of fans been loving. But – Again, that's not the end all be all when it comes to even adding even more to this roster because they still have the possibility of making a trade. Who they could trade for? Hey, Ravens, you got some options still there. Now, like teams may be like, all right, we got the guy who we want to replace this guy. Now, this guy is available for sure. We'll take next year's draft capital, or they could be something else. But. That's an option to team. Keep it clean. Let me know what y'all think about the Baltimore Ravens possibly adding even more, adding even more quality to their team right now, adding even more leadership to their team right now and just adding even more playmakers to these 2024 Baltimore Ravens. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn the notifications on so you do not miss videos like this or any other updates we got on the Baltimore Ravens. Also, leave a like on a video because it helps out the channel a lot and it helps YouTube recommend the videos to you. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And we out.